What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about all the nitty-gritty details that went into building Frank as requested, as promised, and then what's in the future because after today I don't know how long this truck's going to stay together as is. So let's dive right into it. Frank is my 1967 Ford F100 custom cab. It came frosted turquoise with a 352 and a C6 in it. I picked it up this color, which is a combination of a Ford green and a Ford blue after a respray, and a 360 and a C6 in it. So we yanked that out and started building the chassis for it. And we'll start there. Obviously the truck is Crown Vic swapped. Uh, but additionally, one of the biggest questions is, what is the frame Z? So the frame Z is a two and a half inch um, inset of the frame. So I basically cut the frame rail right behind the cab mount and behind the core support, raise it up two and a half inches, tack it in, box plated it up, and then set it on these wonderful ride tech coilovers. Now, for those of you um, who are on the fence about Crown Big Swaps, they are wide. I think they're 70 inches wheel mounting surface to wheel mounting surface. And so if you want to run a decent wheel up front this low, um, as you can see, fender lips are trimmed, fenders are rolled, and this is a 19 by eight and a half with a plus 35 offset. Now, in all honesty, it's still not enough because I have about a quarter inch before uh, I'm locked to lock with it still rubbing. Um, but most people aren't gonna go this low. If you're just doing a crown vehicle, maybe some coilovers, you can run a, an eight and a half, eight inch, nine inch wide wheel, 35 offset, and do pretty good. So that's the front of Frank. Um, when we move to the back, it sits this low, and all we have going on here is an axle flip. Got the axle on top of the springs, and a front perch flip. So the stock perch was cut, uh, I'm sorry, was flipped over, used the stock bolt holes. So basically the four inches you have between this mounting point and that bolt used to be hanging under the frame. Then I trimmed it and did a fillet weld across the top. So can get this stance with that right there just in the back. The front's obviously the, uh, the complex part, um, but it rides really good with the coilover. Still on leaves in the back. I think we're running some Dodge Dakota shocks back there. And uh, let's talk about the C-notch. C-notch is the mineral bent two by four tubing from Art Morrison. And I just Frenched it in, boxed it in, in the front and rear. There's the shocks. Here's a good shot of underneath the truck. And rode with it. So overall the truck rides pretty good. Um, obviously got the single adjustable shocks up front and uh, just the center of gravity is pretty low on this truck. Um, and, and with the leaf springs in the back, I mean, you guys have seen the social media content. It does donuts, it does burnouts, it rides pretty good. It's a little less harsh in the back than you'd see with a coilover setup this low. Um, but that's gonna happen soon enough because we're gonna auto cross this truck. But uh, yeah, that's, that's really all that's going on. Uh, uh, it does have a custom trans mount that I built at an inch and a half by inch and a half square tube and I tied it into the upper flange and the lower flange of the stock rail, uh, mostly due to the, the cross member that used to run between the radius arm mounts is removed. I remove those on almost all the frames I do. And so I wanted something that would tie the, the top flange of the frame rail in and, and keep it from kind of flaring out. I, I haven't seen that be an issue, but I thought, hey, the way I drive this truck, I want to be sure that she's nice and rigid. So that pretty much covers the chassis. Let's move on to uh, the really boring stuff, the drivetrain. Frank is running a 0646 uh, police interceptor motor with a TR3650 trans out of an 04 Mach 1. So the truck is a five speed and it is running the stock controller with a thinned wire and harness. Since it was a cop car harness, uh, no pats to be deleted or anything. Tuned by Marty Oaks down at Moe's Speed Shop. So uh, it does have the aluminum police interceptor drive shaft in it with the uh, spline joint swapped out for the manual. And again, the uh, 88 out of a 98 to 02 Crown Vic. So listen, you'll hear a lot, the, the Crown Vic rear end is too wide. The 0311 is. That 70 inch wide rear end gives you little to no wheel options. 
Um, this is 65 inches wide, so I'm running an 11 and a half inch wheel back there with positive 22 offset. That's not a whole lot of offset from center, um, and it fits fine. You know, if you get a little more offset or uh, um, a little more backspace, then you know you, you could potentially get some other wheel options in there. But a lot of off the shelf Mustang options bolt right up to this thing. So uh, as far as the rest of the details underneath go, it's got stock headers on it. It's got a Y, not really a Y pipe, but a, a two and a half inch stainless exhaust into a um, knockoff Magnaflow muffler that is a dual two and a half inch in, single three inch out. And again, all that's gonna change. So we'll get to those details shortly. Uh, but first, let's move to the interior. So I almost think the focal point of this interior is the Snowden custom seat. Um, obviously he's a C10 seat builder. He's starting to do some Fords, but I don't know that he's got rails for Fords yet. So really all that had to be done was a custom bracket had to be made. And I just used some angle iron and some, uh, some square tube that I shaped to work. Um, bolt in the stock seat location. And then a little shim here in the front just to, just to get the seat angle right. And uh, that's the C10 rail. And so it still has the adjustability forwards and backwards um, but overall super pleased with this investment it's got pretty nice bolstering um, it's got a, a nice lumbar support and it tilts forward um, so really like that seat again the truck is a five speed so I do want to take a moment to discuss uh, the pedal setup here um, I've had some people sit in the truck and ask what's going on so these are the stock pedals brake and clutch that I shortened an inch and a half and uh, I was a certified welder when I was in production so um, these were CJP welds, complete joint penetration. Um, super strong, should never have a failure there. But I, I, I shortened those, brought them up a little bit, which is made with the, the seat location and um, you know just being six foot tall, it makes it pretty comfortable. Um, and then this is a uh, fly-by-wire pedal out of an 06 Mustang, which is so much more aesthetically pleasing than the stock Crown Vic unit. But uh, I do want to mention it does have a hydraulic clutch in it. And let me explain how that's working. On the firewall, we have the master cylinder kit from Silver Sport Transmissions. It comes with a template on where to drill your hole, where to make your mounting points, and where to drill the hole on the pedal so the lever um, can line up perfectly and, and make good action. So I, I want to shout them out. Uh, Shane at Silver Sport, one of the nicest guys you'll, you'll ever deal with. I called him on a Saturday and he answered the tech line and helped me with some things. But I believe they are the only, definitely the first company to offer a kit built for bump side trucks to use a hydraulic clutch. So if you're going to run a transmission that will take a high, hydraulic throw out, um, they can get everything to you. This transmission does not. This came out of a 99 to 04 New Edge Mustang. So I'm running a slave cylinder on the outside of the trans that drives the uh, clutch fork. And that came from uh, MSD. No, not MSD. Where did that come from? I will link it below here where I got that. Uh, cannot remember for the life of me, but I want, I want to make sure they're included too because um, I, when I talk to Shane at Silversport, I think if you want to do a similar deal, he may recommend that part. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but back to the interior. The truck is running Dakota Digital gauges. Again, these are, these are temporary. Um, these aren't going to stay. We're going to do something different there. And uh, Vintage Air, this is a Gen 4 SureFit kit. Uh, we have a Steeda Triax shifter for a Mustang. We have a Bowler Transmissions shift lever and shift knob, which I love. The firewall insulator is a $62 unit off eBay, as you can tell. And the carpet, uh, shout out to Stock Interiors. I've used them in my Galaxy. I've used them in every F100 we've done. I uh, got the carpet and the mats, and I think it was like less than $200 for the truck. The last piece on the interior I want to call out is the three-point harness. These came from Seat Belts Plus. A ton of colors you can choose from. I almost went with green, stayed with black, but they're retractable. And a Forever Sharp steering wheel, which also is going to change with the new look and direction of the truck. So now that we've gone through all the, I'd say the nitty-gritty details, of what Frank is and, and how it came to be. Um, let's take it for a drive. So 
So when I was building this truck, actually when I was putting the AC in this truck a couple years ago, I found a couple of like just skeleton mouse carcasses. And uh, when I was doing the drive out video, I just uh, shut the door pretty hard. And this little dude just fell out. And like he's not even hard. So eyeballs are gone. Anyway, old truck problems. That's uh, that's the plan. So I'll, I'll insert a picture here of the new uh, new power plant. But it's got a uh, 03 5.4 liter four valve. I pulled it from a navigator. at the uh, the house and editing the video and I realized I left out some things that I, I definitely wanted to cover. The first thing is the fuel system. Um, so as you can see, we fill in the bed. Um, it is a Tanks Incorporated. I believe Holly owns them now. 1970 Mustang EFI tank. Um, you can get everything you need from the fuel level sender, the fuel pump. We're running 340 liter per hour in this one. And uh, you can get the filler next. But, um, <clears throat> they have an EFI line kit too. Comes with all the lines, the regulator. Uh, and all the fuel fittings to make that work off of their site. I mean, it's like, I think it's like a thousand bucks for the whole fuel system and I can run um, probably two to three times the horsepower that this truck is making uh, with that fuel system. Um, another thing is <clears throat> the truck is running all the stock Crown Vic cooling system, which again, that's gonna come out with a new motor. But the fan, the radiator, the coolant overflow, the power steering, all that is right out of the car. And I just made some brackets and made it fit um, in the truck. And then one detail that I've left out a lot that I want to kind of show off is um, to be this low, you, you know that the, the stock um, wheel tub stops here. It rolls here, and then you've got a, a seam all the way down. So I cut all that out. I, I picked up a, you know, I, I went over to Brandon's and cut out some, some inner fenders and just wrenched them in. So that's a little detail that uh, I don't think anyone has ever noticed. And even when I point it out to some people, they, they don't really pick up on it. But one of the things that had to be done to run 11 inch wide tires, wheels in the back, this low. So, um, okay, a couple little details I left out, I want to get in there. Thanks.